Okay, now I want to discuss the, the game between uh, uh, Pillsbury, who played white, and Mason, who played black. Played in Hastings, 1895. The opening is a queen's gambit declined. ECU code D53. The game started out uh, D4, D5, C4, queen's gambit. Black plays E6, so a queen's gambit declined. White plays knight to C3. Black plays knight F6. White plays bishop g5. Black plays bishop e7. This is actually ECO code d53. And the pretty standard openings that I've, uh, or standard opening I've already covered. Now white plays knight f6. And now black tries um, b6. And this move is considered inferior. Black is trying to play the bishop here where we'll look along the, the diagonal here. Um, but normally black will continue the queen's gambit decline by um, trying to um, exchange off some free pieces to free its game or accepting a pawn weakness. What um, black is really trying to do is, is solve its problem of this um, bishop here on uh, on uh, c8. So it plans to put it on the long diagonal and get rid of this pawn. Um, now white on its sixth move will play e3, strengthening in the center, freeing the bishop on f1. Black plays bishop to b7. White plays rook to c1, knowing that the c files can become critical. Maybe I should have said the theme of this game is going to be the c file. So we'll see in this game where white actually controls the c file, and um, black and, and black does not take the opportunity to. Uh, um, to, I guess, play the c-file correctly and white will win the game. So, maybe that should have been a spoiler alert for some people. But, um, now black plays d takes c4 with the idea of opening up this diagonal for the bishop. And normally, though, a black delays capturing the, the pawn until the bishop has um, developed here because after when the black takes the pawn, will force white to uh, make a move. So black plays d takes c4, white plays bishop takes c4. Now black plays knight on b to d7. Um, obviously, if I back up, doesn't want to put the knight here because it will block the bishop and prevent um, c5. So by black by playing the knight to uh, d7, it uh, it helps or can help black for playing e5 and c5. White castles on its ninth move. Black castles. Now white plays the queen to c2. Normally in the queen's gambit declined. Uh, the queen will come to e2 or c2 from c2. The, um, the queen looks along this file and looks um, sort of along here, and especially the square e4. By playing the queen to e2, though, um, um, the queen does support um, the, the push e4 and uh, controls its diagonal much, you know, much greater. So, um, and also if uh, white would have played the queen to c2, black would have probably played bishop takes f3, disrupting the pawn structure on the king. So now black plays <coughs> knight to d5 with the idea of exchanging off some pieces, or at least a piece to uh, uh, open up the game. Now black is, um, or white is, I'm sorry, um, compelled to take the bishop. Uh, moving here is probably not a good option. It would just be taken by the knight. So white takes, uh, white plays, bishop takes e7, uh, queen retakes. And now white will play knight to d5 because it's going to benefit white in, uh, in the following way. Because if um, the bishop retakes, then um, bishop takes 
pawn takes, and black loses a pawn. So now, um, so white just took that knight. It forces black to play e takes d5, shutting off the diagonal. So now the bishop on b7 is, I say, less effective. And now uh, the bishop has to move. You know, or is, has a couple choices, but here white is going to play bishop to the b5, where it attacks the knight. And it also prevents the move c5. Let's see how it prevents c5. Black plays c5. Then the bishop takes the knight, queen takes, pawn takes, pawn takes, and white wins the pawn. So b5 actually prevents c5 and also ties down the queen to the defense of the knight uh, for the moment. So now black plays queen to d6, planning on playing um, c6, driving the... the um, the bishop away. White plays uh, rook to c2. White plans on doubling the rooks at some point. Now black plays c6, forcing the knight to move, uh, the, the bishop to move. The bishop comes back to d3. And now um, Uh, this was probably one of the last opportunities for black to get in this move, c5. It really has delayed it, you know, or a couple moves. Um, well, sometimes it couldn't make the move, and sometimes it could, but it didn't. So this is one of the last times, or the last time, that black can probably get in the move, c5, but does not. Instead, black plays knight to, knight to f6, sort of trying to carry out its plans of attacking the white king, but it's, uh, if I take it back, black needs to really look at its position and say, what's going on here? Um, you know, if uh, if the target here is this pawn, then I gotta, and then black has to ask itself, well, can I defend this pawn, or, you know, do I have to stop and defend, or do I have some counterattack that's going to deflect white from attacking the c-pawn? Unfortunately, the move knight to f6 really doesn't getting anywhere too quickly and it allows white to to attack the um, the pawn. So now um, white plays knight on f to c1. So now black's going to have to come to defend the pawn because now it's too late. If black plays a, tries to play c5 then pawn takes, pawn takes, rook takes, white wins a pawn. So Black defends the uh, pawn by playing rook on a to c8. Now, white is going to is saying, okay, the target here is the c pawn, and who are the defenders? Well, it's the bishop, the rook, and the queen. And white noticed probably the, that this bishop is not uh, doing anything, uh, you know, terribly active, so it decides to get rid of a defender. Exchange off a piece, it plays rook, I mean bishop to a6, forcing the exchange. See now white has gotten rid of a, um, a defender of the c-pawn, it's going to exchange that attacker, or it's going to add an additional attacker of the queen. So white's goal was get rid of a defender and add an attacker, and that's what it did with the move um, bishop to a6 on move 17. Now black plays rook to c7, defending both a7 and c6. Now white plays knight to e5, adding another attacker to the c6 pawn. And now what move is black to make? Well, black's actually going to play c5, pushing the pawn, which isn't going to work. The alternative actually is... Um, Rook on f to c8, which looks natural enough, but it actually loses to this. The knight can just take the pawn, because if um, black re if black takes the rook or if black takes the knight, then the following sequence: queen takes check, you know, recapture, check, 
queen comes back, check, king, rook comes down, and white's going to win the game. Because these pawns over here on this side of the board are going to fall to, uh, you know, obviously the um, pawn on a7 is already under attack, so rook comes over, e f you know, and that pawn's just going to fall, so that doesn't work. So black played c5. I'm going to have to continue this on the next video.